GAD has been acting since her appointment to focus on the challenge of online incitement and hate speech and is taking steps at the internal and international levels to promote practical solutions. I would like to invite Minister Shaked to open this Ministers of Justice convention. Good morning, everyone, um, my dear colleagues, the Minister of Justice of Italy, the Minister of Justice of Greek, and the Minister of Justice of Malta, the Director General of my ministry, Amy Palmore, honored guests. The United States Supreme Court Justice Robert Jackson once wrote that the Constitution is not a suicide pact. Words in this spirit have been uttered over the years in judgments on various occasions by two presidents of the Israeli Supreme Court. Human rights are not a prescription for national suicide, wrote the President Asher Grunis. Professor Aaron Barak wrote more than 30 years ago that it is essential to find a balance between state security and human rights. In his own words, a constitution is not a suicide pact and human rights are not a platform for national destruction. The laws of a nation should be interpreted on a basis of the assumption that it wishes to continue to exist. My friends and ministers of justice, dear audience, the clear statement of the most senior judges is even more relevant in the existing reality. The Cyber Department at the State Attorney's Office has recently analyzed the connection between incitement and terrorism during 2017. Not that it would surprise anyone, but the findings reveal a close connection between the two. It is clear that the, that, that the perpetrators of the terrorist attack in Israel are directly influenced as a role by the consumption of incitement content. But we have also discovered that after a large-scale terrorist attack, social me media is flooded with incitement, hate, anti-Semitic and terrorism-supporting content. It is, it, it transpires from the data we hold that the greatest event which led to a wave of incitement and calls to terrorism is the event where the President of the United States, Donald Trump, announced the transfer of the United States Embassy in Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. I would like to take this opportunity to once again thank President Trump for transferring the American Embassy to Jerusalem as soon as the upcoming Independence Day, a month away. This is respectable 70th birthday present for the State of Israel. Now you can see this graph, um, the peak where uh, uh, the President announced about moving the Embassy, and uh, another, pink, another peak where there were uh, murders, uh, two, two policemen were murdered uh, in, the, uh, in, Jerusalem, in, the, in Jerusalem, in Temple Mount, and uh, of course, as a result, there was a crisis with the magnometers and all this uh, event. Here there was also um, a demonstration and terror attacks and a terror wave, uh, but you can see that uh, the highest peak is uh, after the declaration of the president. In any case, this event that has uh, generated great media resonance in Israel and abroad had led to a massive reaction on the part of some of the Palestinian public, of course, to violence and terrorism against Israelis. I would like to emphasize this has nothing to do with, leg with legitimate criticism of Israel or of the United States this is an express call to violence against Israelis, 
against Israeli targets, against Jews. This incitement, which unfortunately the Palestinian Authority is also a party to, in its own way has necessitated our unique effort against social media for rooting out this despicable discourse. Out of the genuine understanding of the connection between incitement and terrorism, the Ministry of Justice, under my direction, is investing considerable efforts in dealing with illegal online content. This is first and foremost against contents of incitement and terrorism, but also contents of hate of additional kinds, cyberbullying, the publication of sexual content without the consent of the person photographed, and contents inciting to racism. During the next few minutes, I would like to describe to you a detail, in detail a little bit about our activity in that matter. The bulk of our struggle in Israel is on the level of the alternative enforcement alongside criminal enforcement. Within the framework of this enforcement, the struggle is with the, of is with the, of with the offense and not with the offender, with the damage and not with the damager, with the publication and not with the publisher. This is out of the understanding that in cyberspace, it is sometimes difficult to identify the perpetrator of the offense or to bring him to justice. He is likely to enjoy anonymity or to act outside Israeli territory. I would like to share with you two legislative processes that I have promoted concerning the alternative, the alternative enforcement. One process was completed in September 2017. This is the law on authorized for the prevention of committing crimes through use of an internet site. The law allows blocking access to websites that include terrorist organization activity. Another process I am conducting with the Minister of Public Security, Gilad Ardan, is the removal of incite, inciting material. The draft is presently in an advocated stage of, leg of legislation at the Knesset. It allows an application to be made to the court for an order to remove content constituting an offense, understanding state security, public security, or a person's security. These two legislative process, processes were designed to give the law enforcement agencies formal tools to demand the removal of illegal online content to the restriction of access to it. But my Minister's Act do not stop at legislation, but also include enforcement. In March 2016, I instructed the Cyber Department at the, at the State Attorney's Office to create tools to deal with contents of incitement, terrorism, and hate on the Internet. Other government, ministries, and defense establishments are partners in this activity. All of us together are acting to reduce the content of incitement, terrorism, and hate on the Internet. This is not only on the formal legal channel of, of court orders, but also on the voluntary channel. The objective is that the various online platforms will remove the content or restrict the access to it on the basis of their term of use following an application on behalf of the State Attorney Office. Cooperation between the enforcement agencies and the online platform is the key to a more effective war against online incitement and cyberbullying. I would like to take advantage of this platform to present for the first time the figures for our activity on the subject. During 2017, the Cyber Department at the State Attorney's Office submitted 12,351 requests to remove content, to restrict access, and filter search results in respect for forbidden contents. 73.5% of the content that we acted against were related to terrorist activity and support of terrorism. 25.5% of the contents that we acted against were related to incitement to terrorism, racism, and violence, and also a threat to commit terrorism. The rest of the activity focused on, on offense of violation of privacy and cyberbullying. 
Figures for the activity during 2017 indicate a significant increase as opposed to 2016, when a total of 2,241 requests to removal content restrict access and filter search results were submitted. I am pleased to tell you that the success rate in that matter of removal of forbidden online contents are high, and while we are getting a good cooperation from Facebook, we don't get any cooperation for Twitter at all. Um, um, we are seeing that uh, since Twitter is not reacting and not cooperating with us, um, there is a, um, a shift of terror organization that used to work with Facebook, now they shift and working with Twitter. Um, and uh, actually, we think maybe to use also uh, legal actions against Twitter. Alongside the subject, the subject of incitement and terrorism during 2018, we are also launching accelerate activity in all matters per, per, pertain, pertaining to harmful online publication against minors, bullying and humiliation against a, sec, against a sexual background. This field, which is very common on the internet and social media, is also dealt with by our ministry, both in the field of public diplomacy and in the field of enforcement. I have uh, dedicated most of my speech to the description of the activity of the Israeli Minister of Justice in all matters, per training to the struggle against inc incitement to terrorism, support of terrorism, racism, and cyberbullying. However, the activity does not have to be confirmed solely to the political sphere Cyberspace entails a struggle on several levels. On the individual level, education to online safety, to respectful discourse and to abstention from hate, incitement and bullying. On the political level, I have described in great details. On the international level, joining forces and joint action against, against and perhaps together with the various service providers for the sake of creating a safe online environment. Cooperation that will allow a user to benefit from the fruits of the revolution, which is the internet revolution, and alongside this, to neutralize the problematic online factors. My friends, the ministers of justice, I thank you for your important participation in this forum I thank you for your willingness to act together for the sake of this important objective. As I said a few minutes ago, the war on incitement is not a political matter and not a monopoly of the State of Israel. It's the most paramount interest of the democratic countries. We will now be happy to hear your position in the important matters on our doorstep. I am certain that each one of you can contribute to the discourse from his own unique perspective, and together we can effectively fight the online hate discourse. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister Shaked. I would like to ask Mr. Andrea Orlando, Minister of Justice of Italy, to speak on this topic. Buongiorno.